Dr. Kathy Bush. And I'm Dr. Tara Peters, and we are the Leadership Doctors. We're excited to have the opportunity to visit with Mike Cavanaugh today. He's the Executive Vice President of Max Digital, and he'll be giving us a little bit of uh, his background and the role that he plays there and uh, the type of work that they do there, as well as uh, the primary purpose of our talk today is to get some lessons from leaders. And I've known Mike for quite a while and have uh, learned a lot from exploring various topics of leadership with him. So I'm excited to hear what uh, Mike has to share with us today. Welcome, Mike. Hi, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. We're excited to chat with you. So just to get us started, if you could give us a little bit of an overview of your leadership journey and um, specifically, as I mentioned, the role that you play at Max Digital uh, so that we can get some context as we jump into some lessons from leadership. Yeah, yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. So um, I grew up working uh, in an entrepreneurial environment, um, you know, a small business, working with my dad every day from the time I was a young, young kid and I, and I got to learn pretty quickly that just because he, you know, you were, maybe were the, the child of the boss didn't mean that you had any um, perks. And in fact, it was the opposite. So I got to do all the jobs that nobody else wanted to do for a lot less money than everybody else got paid. So it was a very humbling experience, but, but taught me a lot about the industry that I, I've spent a great deal of my career in, um, you know, from the time I was really a elementary school age, age child, there's probably some labor laws against it, but it, it definitely instilled work ethic early. Um, with me and grew up in that industry, um, left uh, to join the Marine Corps when I was about 17 years old. So I had a great timing. I joined the Marine Corps and I left in August of 2001 and then September of 2001. We all know what happened. So I thought I was going to get um, free college and live in California and get paid to, you know, go play G.I. Joe. But and I, I actually got to go uh, play G.I. Joe and got uh, deployed uh, twice uh, to Iraq uh, during Operation uh, Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom 1 and 2. So learned a lot about leadership in the Marine Corps there uh, from a variety of people. Um, you know, some of the, the sayings, I think the leadership sayings that stick with me and, and have really stuck with me through, through my entire life came from some of my, my leaders in the Marine Corps. Um, after that, I came right back to the automotive industry, started working uh, in dealerships again, uh, recession happened not too far after that, and I went to work for a, a tremendous company, um, Credit Acceptance. They're um, you know, traded on the NASDAQ, CACC, tremendously successful company, run extremely well. Um, and I, I worked there for about eight years. While I was there, I, I uh, got my uh, MBA uh, from Northwood, also got my undergrad from Northwood while I was working about 50 hours a week. I, I got my undergrad from Northwood, and then uh, went back uh, from for my master's. I was at credit acceptance, traveling a lot and trying to squeeze in work in full full uh, full time school at the time as well was it was an interesting challenge. But I think that's part of being a leader, stretching yourself and and, and learning how to do uh, do a lot in a little bit of time. Um, after eight years over there, went on to be the chief operating officer of a a growing dealership group and a finance company, captive finance company. And um, we went from seven dealerships to 28 dealerships in a little over two years, which is insane growth for anybody that's been in that industry. Um, but learned a lot there, learned about, you know, raising capital and, you know, preparing to take a company public, uh, potentially raising debt, all, all of those kinds of interesting things as well. Um, and then as of late, I joined Max Digital as the executive vice president. I've been here about two years, and um, you know, we're a software company that serves uh, the automotive industry, some of the largest dealership groups in the country. And uh, now we're, we're uh, fighting fighting the uh, the challenges uh, that are ahead of us with uh, the coronavirus. So interesting time to be a leader right now, for sure. Well, Mike, I certainly agree that it's an interesting time to be a leader. We might say that's kind of the understatement too, right? Because it's uh, it's interesting, it's challenging, um, it's probably stretching you and I imagine your team uh, in ways that you never imagined and quite frankly that none of us uh, imagined given the really unprecedented nature um, of what's going on right now. But listening to your background there, right, you have a wealth of experience, you've done finance, you've done operations side, and now you're on dealing with software and the IT side of the house. So um, given that breadth of experience that you have, talk to us about how the coronavirus is impacting uh, not only your operations, but really how you're leading your team right now uh, through this situation. 
Yeah, this, this has been a true test test of leadership and a test of, of your preparedness as an organization. I don't think, you know, I think we've learned this all the way from our, our country to each individual business. It's hard to prepare for a pandemic. You know, they only happen <laughs> once every hundred years or so, so we, yeah. <laughs> they don't tend to be on the documented plan, but they probably will be going forward after this, I think. So um, I would say... First and foremost, we've had to turn over every stone to, to come up with, with with capital, right? How do we save money? Um, because we've had uh, a lot of our customers are dealerships and, and you know, dealerships in some states are, are deemed essential businesses and some states are deemed non-essential businesses. And in some states, it depends on the week. Some weeks they're an essential business, some weeks they're not. So, um, you know, we've had to deal with how do we help out our customers who may be crippled at this time and, um, you know, they pay us a software bill every month and they're, they're asking for some help. So, you know, when you've got a lot of customers asking for some help and you rely on, you know, um, annual recurring revenue is, you know, ARR we refer to in the software industry. A lot is, is how we kind of measure our success and pay our bills here. So when you could be looking down, you know, 75% of what you expected, 50% of what you expected in some cases, that's a, that's a cash flow challenge. Um, so you have to look at um, a lot of things. You know, our executive team is trying to keep every single person employed that we possibly can for as long as we can. So across the board, we took a 20 to 30% pay cut um, and waived our bonuses for the rest of the year to, to keep as many people employed as we can. Um, you know, we've looked at our software expenses ourselves, our CRM, you know, we, we use Salesforce CRM, which is not an inexpensive uh, product to use. And we've had to look at alternatives for, for that. Um, we've, you know, cut our travel budgets, our marketing budgets, you know, we, we've kind of tried to separate things between, you know, what's, what's essential um, to operating the business day to day, what is, you know, kind of an expansion type role or activity, and then what's just really a nice to have. And, and you quickly realize, you know, what is absolutely necessary to run your business. Um, and then you have to look at the next kind of um, possible scenarios that come up and plan for this may not be the first round of cuts that we have to make from an expense standpoint. You know, what, what happens if, if this scenario expands into June, into July, into August, and we've had to kind of create a you know, DEFCON one through five type scenario where we're prepared for the absolute worst. And what does that look like? And how do we still provide service to our customers? Um, and how do we provide transparency to our employees throughout this? That's the most important thing is how do you give everybody a peace of mind, even when the news isn't good? And even though you have to lay out what worst case scenario is, but keep them in the loop. Because I think when you don't do that, people only start to come up with you know, what could happen in their own mind. And that's usually way worse. Um, uh, trust me, I, I deal with that myself sometimes is, you know, you think I'm going to get the call tomorrow. I'm going to get fired tomorrow. And if you don't really uh, loop in your people on what your thought process is and where you're looking to cut expenses first, they automatically assume. And every time the phone rings or they see your, your name in their email inbox, they're worried it's going to be that news. And, uh, and so that's, that's really what we're looking at right now is how do we keep everybody in the loop communicate, over communicate. We're on a Zoom call or a regular call nearly every day with our team. You know, we, we have a, a, a all hands call every other week with every single person in the company on one call. We have team calls once a week, kind of individual teams, and then we'll break them down into kind of smaller departmental uh, calls after that as well. So it's communicate, over communicate, and then over communicate a little bit more, I think is, is what we've, we've learned through this, this challenge. Boy, I think as I listen to the various um, ideas that you're sharing, actions that you're taking, the behaviors of your leadership team, um, it's really commendable. A lot of the um, lessons you've learned in your journey, um, the various crises that you've had to uh, deal with in different periods of time, kind of position you, I think, right now to um, have that insight about uh, what people need at this point in time. At least that's what I'm hearing. And, and I want to go back to something you said about your military experience. You said you learned, and, and I want to start by saying thank you for your service. And, um, and really just thinking about the um, lessons that you learned that you said kind of from that period of time. Um, can you give us an idea whether they're from that period or some other place, some of the major principles you carry around with you as a leader and, and bigger picture as well as these sort of crisis times, you know, these major principles that really help uh, manage in this, in these difficult periods of time. And that's, that's a great question. So I've, I've, I've really got three core principles that I've, I've used as a, you know, as a human being and, and, and as a leader to, to guide my, 
my decisions and how I interact with people on a, on a regular basis. And, and those three are, are to be patient, to be kind and to give grace, right? Those, those are just, they're very basic, but they're very applicable and they're especially applicable during this time, right? So to be patient with people. And I think everybody deals with, with chaos and uncertainty and fear a little bit differently. Um, and some people, it can, it can be incredibly distracting, right? So a simple task that may take someone, you know, a half hour, an hour to do may take two hours because they, they're overwhelmed with fear. Um, you know, you've got everyone working from home and they may be trying to deal with how do I keep my kids engaged in learning while I'm trying to get this task done. So I think to be, one, to just be realistic, but to be patient with people and not, um, not put people in a, in a situation where they have more undue stress, right? If something is truly urgent, you know, wait, wait to make that urgent because this, the saying, this is one of those things I think I, I learned when I was in the Marine Corps is if, if everything's urgent, then nothing is, um, is you, you got to know when it's a fire drill and not to make everything a fire drill or you'll just, people will be frayed. So I think one to be patient and, you know, you would hope people would be patient with you as well. And, you know, whether you're a, you know, a VP and you're reporting to the CEO or whether you're, you know, a, a brand new employee reporting to a first time manager, I think, you know, you would want that kind of uh, reciprocated um, as well. So be, be patient as first, be kind. Um, again, when you think about all of the people that you're charged to lead, um, you're gonna set the tone for how they behave and interact with each other and how they behave and interact with your customers as well. So if you're short with them, if you're not kind to them, they're gonna be uh, unkind to each other. And uh, I, I really believe in a, in a crisis and in a time like this, mental health is incredibly important, incredibly important. And when people know that they have people that they can trust that have their back, that are kind to them, they're going to operate better. They're going to operate with less stress. They're going to be less distracted. So I think be, be kind there and then, and then have grace is we, we all make mistakes. I've probably made more mistakes than, than uh, anybody that you'll probably talk to in any of these calls. I can admit that um, I've made mistakes. I definitely wish I hadn't. And I think you, you look for grace all the time and you need to give grace as well. And again, if, if you can show, you know, your employees, your team that, that you have grace with them when they make a mistake, um, you know, it, it sets the tone that when you make a mistake, maybe for one of your customers, they'll have that, that same, that same grace for you as well. And I think, you know, if somebody that's a customer maybe pays a bill late to be compassionate about that right now and to have, and to have some forgiveness and to help make arrangements and do things like that. But th those three principles have been applicable, you know, throughout my life and they're especially applicable now when everybody is extra sensitive, extra afraid, extra kind of uncertain about what the future holds. You know, Mike, there's so many good just nuggets there of insight and wisdom. And as you were talking, I had to smile to myself about the whole piece around making mistakes. Um, we've all been there, done that, probably checked that box uh, multiple times. But one of the things I think about, and I was thinking about as you were talking, is just how it allows us to grow, um, how it allows us to discover new things about ourselves. And so I think it would be great, I mean, given your experiences and just the opportunities that you've had, for you just to talk a little bit about what you've done to grow and to develop yourself um, over the years. I know we're going to have some people who are going to be listening or going to be going, you know, wow, what should I be doing? I want to be an executive VP or I want to have, um, you know, a career trajectory that will allow me to get into a senior leadership position. So just kind of giving a window into what you would say, hey, these are the things I think that, that I've done in terms of developing myself and I think it would be helpful um, to others. Um, that's, that's another great question. You guys have some good ones today. Um, so I, I will say that this is, I, I learned this, another kind of principle a long time ago is to expect excellence every day, right? It's kind of the three E's, expect excellence every day out of yourself and everything that you do. And that means, you know, don't, don't give yourself excuses and ways to get out of things. So it, it has a lot to do with, uh, you know, self-awareness and accountability. And, uh, I, I try to hold myself to a high bar every day in whatever I do. And if that means, you know, spending my free time to, to learn about um, Google Analytics or how search engine optimization works so that I'm, you know, more educated when I make marketing related decisions. And I'll go through those classes, right? And I've been a big proponent of those on social media for other people to take free classes to learn yourself. Like, we live in an age where you can just 
up yourself so much if you decide to. Like if I decide to do that instead of what I had in the history of the world. So I think if you just, you know, really intentionally go after trying to, to learn things and develop yourself, I think that's important. Um, the other thing that is that is important is to take a look at at the long big picture of like where do I want to be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And this was so hard for me to do when I was in my early 20s. I mean, you look at like what am I going to be doing next month? And I want that that big title. I want to be the boss. I want to be the VP, right? Like you can't get so caught up in the title because the title means nothing, right? I think you, we all hear those kind of sayings about like, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And again, when you're the young person that just wants to get there, it, you're just like, I don't care about that. I just want to get there ready. But it really is about the, jer- the journey. And I think to embrace the, the mentality of like being a lifelong learner. And I always said like, I want to be a student, a student of my industry forever. I want to learn as much as I can. And I took the title and I took the pay out of it as well as I tried to live within my means so that I could take opportunities that may have paid me less money than I knew I wanted to learn and get good at to prepare myself for the future. So it it wasn't by accident that I left, you know, certain roles and and I, I wanted to learn about training and development when I started the credit acceptance because I knew if I wanted to be a good leader, I had to learn how to properly train other people, other adults. Um, So I wanted to develop that skill. And I took a a pretty big pay cut at the time to do that because I knew somebody was going to be investing in me and it's almost like paying tuition. Um, So I had to do that. I wanted to learn, you know, that, that finance side of the business. And then I wanted to learn, you know, the software side of the business, this side, I saw where the industry was going as a whole. And I knew that if I just stayed status quo with what I was doing and I didn't get really good at software and technology, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, I would be a dinosaur. I'd be left behind. And I think um, if you take a look at, at yourself in no matter what industry you're in and you think about how much lead time you have to adapt and adjust to the changing environment, there's no excuse. You can't be um, mad if, you know, you know, the computers take my job or things like that. Computers took the job that was there 20 years ago. But as long as you learn and adapt new skills, you're always going to have a place someplace, but you have to just pay attention and not be stuck in the status quo. And if I had one word to say about like, what have I done to develop myself as a leader over time is I have an anti status quo mentality of just like, if the only reason that we do things is because we've always done it this way, then I question it. And it's kind of the same thing with myself. Like, am I getting too caught up in this same grind? Am I, is my mind getting closed off from new ideas? And if it is, I need to check myself or I need to change my environment and not be afraid to do that. So it's not for everybody. That's kind of chaos for some people, but it's worked for me. Well, as long as I've known you, you've been um, hungry to learn and open to learning and uh, sharing what you're learning as well. And so as we're wrapping up, I wonder if you've learned anything specific about yourself in this um, kind of quarantine situation, working from home kind of a unique situation. I know you've got some kids at home, so maybe it's uh, in the balancing act of all of that. Um, anything that you've learned about yourself or an insight you have at this point about the importance of the role of leaders, um, either you know, category would be fine. What, what, what have you learned that you'd like to share with those folks who are watching? Uh, great, great question again. So uh, one thing that I've learned being at home with my children uh, doing homeschool and they're both pretty young is that teachers are really underpaid. Teachers are really underpaid and they do an amazing job for us every day. And we, man, we really need to give them a lot more credit than they get because they're amazing human beings to do what we're trying to do right now in the comfort of our home with one or two. They do with 30 every day and they deserve all the vacation they get. So that's the, that's the number one thing I learned. Um, number two, I would say, is that it's really easy to be a leader when things are going well and you're making a lot of money and you can talk about all these great principles and all these things, but you really know who a leader is when times get tough, when they get nasty, when, when you have to get dirty, and when you have to kind of come out of the ivory tower, when you have to roll up your sleeves, when you have to be the one having the tough conversations with customers, when you have to be having tough conversations with employees, laying off or firing friends, people that you've known for decades, um, that that really shows you what kind of leader you are then. So I think the the folks out there that I know that are true leaders, um, they're they're making it through this situation okay. They probably have a heavy heart uh, right now because you, you have empathy and you care about your people quite a bit. But 
you're leading through it. You're not letting it consume you and you're not, um, you know, getting reactive or agitated. And you know, I think that, that that's a good lesson is just, you see who you are as a leader when times get this challenging. Well, thank you so much, Mike, um, for spending some time with us. Just some great lessons and insights uh, that you've been able to share with our audience. And so we want to encourage those of you who are viewing today um, to go to our website, theleadershipdoctors.com. You'll see more videos, not only uh, Mike's video, but also others as well from leaders who are really sharing uh, perspective that we hope will be helpful to you. So thank you so much uh, for tuning in.